Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you another project using the Chocola watercolor brush pens and I'll also be announcing who won a set of these for themselves. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create and find out if you're the lucky winner. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. So earlier this month, I shared with you a little unboxing and trial run of these Chocola watercolor brush pens. And then I came back a couple days later and shared with you a graduation card that I created. I will pop a picture of that up on screen. In that original video, I let you know how you could enter to win one of these sets of watercolor brush pens for yourselves. And toward the end of this video, I'll be letting you know who won and how they can claim the prize. But before we get to that, I thought I would make another card using the brush pens just to show you how versatile they are. For the graduation card, I used a emboss resist technique and today I'll be using the brush pens directly on to some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. Some of the other products that I'll be using today is this stamp set from Papery Ink. It is called Hello Hummingbirds. It is so adorable and I actually bought this with my mom in mind. She loves hummingbirds. I will be stamping in Versamark and heat embossing that with my Detail Black embossing powder. For me, I just like to do that so I can stay kind of within the lines. Now the set of brush pens does come with a couple different water brushes and I did use those previously, but for today I'm going to use my Zig Clean Color Colorless Blender Marker. I got out a scrap of the Bristol Smooth cardstock and then I got out some pieces of paper from this Jen Hadfield My Bright Life collection. I'm not sure if I'll end up using all of these or how much of each I'll use, but right now this is what I plan on using. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty. I'll be starting today's card by doing all of the stamping. I place my piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock into my Misty, and then I arrange the three stamps for my focal point kind of centered in that piece of cardstock. I am using my Misty so I can double stamp it to get it nice and juicy, but before I stamp it, I got out my embossing buddy and used that so the powder only sticks to where I want it to. You'll see here I'm using my fingers and just rubbing across all of those stamps. Because they're new, I find that this helps getting them inked up for the first time. But you'll see here I did do that twice, and once that's done, I'm going to pour on that detail black embossing powder and heat set that with my tool. If you get a lot of warping when you emboss with one of these heat tools, I have a couple of suggestions for you. First of all, I always warm my heat tool up for about 30 seconds before I actually bring it to the paper. And then I start heating from underneath for a little bit, and then I bring it to the top for the final set to turn that powder into the slick looking stuff. While I still have my Misty out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on the inside of my card base. I chose that I miss you so much. I got that placed just about centered on the inside. It's not perfect. And then because I'm not going to be embossing it, I got out my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Now you'll notice here that first time it doesn't stamp completely dark, but because I'm using my Misty, I can just place that right back down and get that center to be more bold. And now it's time to do the coloring. I got out a piece of scrap cardstock and I will be using that to wipe my colorless blender clean when I think it's too saturated with color. On the left here are the colors that I chose for the image. 
Online, I looked up hummingbird clip art because I really didn't know what colors they were. And I found a lot of different options for hummingbirds, but most of them had some kind of blue and green. So I chose this blue and green color, and then I got out a yellow for the little beak and its feet, and then the pink for the tulips. The main focus of today's video, besides announcing the winner of the giveaway, is just to show you how I easily color with these brush pens. I am not a master colorer when it comes to things like this. I just try to keep it sweet and simple. So if this sounds like you, I thought you might like to see how I use these. For my little hummingbirds, I want the green and the blue to kind of fade in or blend together. So I start, and like most things I color, I put the color around the outside and just blend it to the center for the highlight. I don't usually pay too much attention to where the light is coming from. So I go and I place the blue marker to the left side of most of the bird, and then I come in with my green and place some green to the right side. Once I have that color laid down, I then start doing my blending. Now you do not have to use this colorless blender pen that I'm using. You could use the water brushes that come with the kit. But I start by just kind of pulling in that blue just a little bit. And when I think that my pen gets too saturated, I then color off the extra on the piece of cardstock to the side. Once I have the blue pulled in, I then wipe off my brush and I start with the green. And I do the same thing. I pull the green in just a little bit and you'll see that it leaves me kind of a white area in the middle or a lighter area. So once I'm done with both of the colors blending those, I then go and blend them together. This gave a pretty nice smooth transition. You do have to work with a little, little bit, but you'll get the feel of these in no time. It was super simple. I realized that I had forgotten to color in the beak and the feet on the first bird, so I went ahead and quickly used that kind of yellow-orange marker and used it on both of the birds. What I did here was I just kind of colored a little bit of each of those pieces in yellow, and then I blended it out with my colorless blender. I then colored the second bird using pretty much the same technique as the first, but because I already showed you details of that, I did color most of this off screen. Now let's get started on that focal point. The first pieces that I'm going to color are going to be the leaves and the stems of the tulips. Now putting the color on these, I usually did some on the top and bottom of each leaf and stem, and then I added some green wherever I thought there might be a shadow or an overlap. Once I had the green placed down, I pulled back in that colorless blender and went through and blended the colors in so there was kind of a highlight again on the center of those leaves and stems. And now I'm gonna show you how I color one of the tulips. I'll be using the pink for this, and just like with the birds, I lay down color on the outside edges and where I think there might be a shadow or an overlap. Once I've laid that color down, I then get out my colorless blender and pull that color into the rest of the petal, making sure to leave an area that's a little bit lighter on each of these. As I was editing today's video, I remembered that I completely forgot to tell you about my affiliate link in the description box and about my special coupon code. If you would like to go to the Chocola website and purchase any of their products, I do have a special link below and I would love it if you would use it. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it gives me just a little bit and helps me keep this channel going. And I also have a 10% off coupon code for you that's even good on sale prices. So if you go to the Chocola website, I would love it if you would use this discount code, Alicia E. 10. And now I'll show you how I colored a letter. I went ahead and chose the blue for these since I had done the leaves in green and I placed my color on the left and top edges of the letters and then again anywhere where there was overlap or I thought there was a shadow. 
Once I had that color laid down, I then pulled it in until there was a nice blend on each of the letters. Now that my image is all colored, I'm at a good stopping point to go ahead and announce the winner of the watercolor brush pens. I'm gonna flip over to my computer screen here in just a little bit, and I will do the drawing and pick the winner. If that winner is you, make sure to keep watching all the way to the end of the video, and I'll tell you how to claim the prize. Just a heads up that the winner will have one week to contact me before I do a redraw. So even if your name isn't chosen today, make sure to stay subscribed in case that happens. Let's go ahead and find out who won the brush pens. I will be using the YouTube random comment picker website to choose a winner. I copy the URL from my video and place that onto the picker website. And then I will be filtering comments by the hashtag, hashtag enter me. That's how I knew that you were interested in winning. So I'm going to click start. And as long as a person has included their favorite product from the Chocola website, they are the winner. And congratulations to Love, Wisdom, Grace. Congratulations, I'm so excited for you. Again, make sure to keep watching so you know how to claim your prize. Well, due to a technical difficulty, i.e. not enough memory on my camera, the end of this video is coming sooner rather than later. I did miss showing you how I cut each of the pieces and put the card together, but I'm hoping that by seeing these close-ups on screen, you can get an idea of what I did for yourself. Let's go ahead and find out how you're going to claim the prize if you're the winner. If you're the lucky winner of the watercolor brush pens, here is how you're going to claim your prize. You are going to send me an email at callmecraftyal at gmail.com and let me know, hey, I won your Chocola giveaway. Once you have done that, you're going to come back to this video, leave a comment below with the first three letters of your email address. That way, I'm going to be able to connect your YouTube account with the email address that contacted me. Once you have done both of those things, I will contact you for your address. You will have until midnight on May 28th to contact me. That is going to be midnight central standard time. If you have any questions on anything from the video, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed getting to see kind of how I made my card today, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.